so today we are going to start with the ntp configuration on the firewall and the ntp authentication so let's quickly just revise the basic stuff related to the ntp protocol so ntp is what network time protocol next ntp is udp based protocol which is having port number 123 now we know that ntp works on client and server model right so there will be a server who will be providing the time to the client right so let's start the configuration uh, move to the evng platform let me take a router iol save i'll connect router r1 with the management interface of the firewall it's not mandatory that you should connect the management interface of the firewall you can connect with any interface of the firewall it is okay while performing the practical save so in this topology i am going to configure router as my server and the cisco firewall as my ntp client fine so let me just start the topology wipe all nodes i would like to remove all the configuration if any exist on these appliances and then start all nodes so i will configure this router with the ip address 10.1.1.1 and the management interface of the firewall with 10.1.1.10 i'll configure router r1 as an ntp server and firewall as an ntp client let's see how does ntp configuration works on the firewall then we will talk about the ntp so enable configuration terminal host name ntp server so let's configure the interface of the router with the ip address 10.1.1.1255.255.255.0 now move to firewall so firewall is still booting up let's wait for a while until then you guys just revise the configuration of the ntp server on the router because you are going to tell me enable configuration terminal host name and asa done now let's configure the management interface of the firewall with the ip address 10.1.1.10255.255.255.0 now we know that whenever we configure any interface of the firewall we need to define a logical name right until and unless you will not define the logical name the firewall is not going to receive or send the traffic from that port right so name if let me just name it as management and what else you need to configure security level right so basically i have introduced the concept of security level how much trust worthy that port is right so if you are not going to define the security level by default the security level will be taken as zero okay you can see it says you can configure any number from 0 to 500 you can configure security level 50 51 whatever you want to okay so show run interface m0/0 so our configuration part is complete now let's verify the connectivity between router and the firewall show route 
management only right this is how you check the routing table on the firewall for the management uh, <coughs> interface the route is there ping 10.1.1.1 this is the ip address of the router ping is successful so the first step to configure ntp protocol that there should be reachability between the client and the server now we will configure our router as an ntp server now you guys have to tell me the configuration part tell me anybody can be uh, can volunteer can be volunteer and can just help me with the commands so command is ntp server and the ip address uh, no i am talking about the command on the router how can i configure this router as an ntp server ntp master ntp and <coughs> yes ntp, NTP master. master and then you and can then define then the startm value right yeah, however it yes. is optional that's it mm -hmm. yes show ntp status do show ntp status it says it is synchronized with the reference clock is what local now i would like to configure this firewall as a client so what shall be the command ntp, NTP server then server server ip then address ip address. ip address of the and then we need to define the ip address of the server so that is 10.1.1.1 then what else you need to define source which interface my management interface okay the you have to define the logical name of the interface that's it so that is all required to configure uh, your cisco firewall as an ntp server so how you will verify show ntp status so it says clock is unsynchronized so again it will take some couple of seconds or minutes to get the time synchronized okay ping 10.1.1.1 <coughs> run execute that command show ntp status <coughs> now this thing is something which i cannot help with we need to wait until the clock gets synchronized by the time the firewall will get synchronized with the ntp server let's talk about the ntp authentication okay so <coughs> i believe now all of you are aware of the ntp authentication i have all requested all of you to please go through the ntp authentication that we discussed on the router so again we are going to talk with the four different cases the first case is what when uh, that's your server that's client client means again the as fine that's your router now <coughs> guys <coughs> let's suppose if i implement if there is no authentication commands on the server similarly when there is no authentication commands on the client now will the times will the time get synchronized yes that time will get synchronized second thing will the authentication happen in this case no let's call this as a time synchronized whether the time will synchronize or not and this one as uh, authentication will happen or not okay so in this scenario the time will get synchronized but no authentication will happen fine now let's talk about the second case let's suppose that your server is configured with the authentication commands okay authentication keys have been configured <clears throat> but no authentication command is running on the firewall now please tell me will the time get synchronized or not all of you again the concept is exactly similar what we have discussed on the router if the authentication my there. point is yes tarun my point is let's suppose if i have run the authentication command on the server okay 
but on the firewall or you can say on the client i have not run any authentication command now my question is will the time synchronize or the time will not synchronize on the client the time will synchronize you because ntp do one one way one way absolutely one way. the client the uh, the yes the time will synchronize now the second question will the authentication happen oh authentication will no. not happen. No, no authentication will happen because authentication request is always generated by the client. Is it clear? Now, third, if we have implemented, if if there is no authentication on the server, but we have implemented the authentication on the client. Now, in this scenario, will the time get synchronized? Answer is no. And will the authentication happen? Yes, the authentication will happen in this case. Why? Because the client will initiate for the authentication. And since the server is not running with the authentication command, so obviously there will uh, there will be no time synchronization. However, the client will request the client will send the authentication message to the server is it clear and the last one <coughs> if the authentication is configured on both the appliances then the time will get synchronized and the authentication will happen so i hope all of you are clear with this because we have we had a detailed discussion about all these four cases on the router any query please let me know <coughs> now meanwhile let's check if the time has synchronized on our firewall or not so you can see the time has been synchronized on the firewall fine guys so what command we have run only the one command has been executed on the firewall and what was that command ntp server the uh, ip address of the server and the source interface as simple as that now let's talk about the ntp authentication and since we have already discussed all these four cases along with the router right so i'm not going to discuss these three cases i will just i'm just going to discuss the fourth case that means the authentication we will run the authentication command on firewall and on the router and we'll see uh, whether the time will synchronize or not okay so first of all just remove the ntp configuration from the firewall now i told you if you want to remove any configuration on the firewall so what do you need to do you need to just run this command clear configure if you execute this command the firewall will remove all the configurations routing configuration interface configuration that means all the configuration will be removed but let's suppose if i would like to remove only the specific protocol configuration so i can write clear configure ntp and now the ntp configuration has been removed let's verify show run ntp uh, there is uh, no as such sorry, commands sorry prashant one question here yes please uh, uh, clear configuration agar if uh, by mistake i do it will ask yes or no to me or it will directly remove the Yo, config clear configure execute sorry clear configure all is the command clear configure all it will remove all the configuration okay no so will it ask yes or no to me or it will directly remove all it will remove all the configuration so i should not by mistake press all, all because uh, it is the only way to remove the, that i i cannot do no or delete or something like no, that no no you can run the no commands there is a no see you can run the no commands okay? okay if i want to remove this command from the firewall which command this command if i want to remove this i can just use the no keyword and the command will be removed okay, okay. however on the firewall you can run this command also clear configure and then you can define the specific protocol which you would like to uh, remove from the firewall so this command will basically remove the complete configuration of that protocol are you able to understand 
Got it. When you are going to run the no command, it will particularly going to remove that particular command only. But with this clear configure and when and then you define the protocol, it will remove all the configurations of that protocol. That kind of feature router don't have, right? Right. Clear, clear configure BGP. No, no. Right. No, no. <laughs> no, router does not have. Okay. So hmm. if you want to remove all the configuration from the firewall, okay, you can run this it. command. Got it. Got clear, it. Uh, if you want to remove all the configuration from the firewall, you can run this command clear configure all. And you can see previously the host name was ASA. Now the host name is Cisco ASA. That means my firewall has removed all the configuration. Show interface IP brief. Did you notice the management interface IP has been removed? So let's reconfigure interface M0 slash zero. No shutdown. Name if. I would like to name it as management, then security level. I would like to configure security level as 100 and then IP address 10.1.1.10.255.255.255.0. Got it. So host name ASA. Now there is no NTP configuration on the firewall. Similarly, move to router. Let's remove that command. No NTP master one. Show, do show NTP status. NTP is not enabled. So right now my firewall and the router is not configured with the NTP configuration. Now what we are going to do, we will configure NTP protocol along with the NTP authentication. So now all of you are requested to please tell me the authentication commands on the router. Okay. So now, can anyone would uh, would like to tell me the authentication NTP authentication commands on the router? Anyone? Uh, NTP authentication key. NTP authentication key. Then mm -hmm. we have to define the key ID. Then yeah. uh, MD5 algo, algorithm algo. and then the password, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So, so my yes. password is okay. In the lab examination, let me tell you how you are going to get the password. So in the lab examination, guys, you, you will get the passwords like this. C capital C small I S C zero one, two, three. Okay. So in the lab examination, the Cisco will ask you to configure password, something like this capital C small I S C zero, one, two, three or capital C small I S C O at the rate one, two, three. So you will get the password, something like this always in your lab examination. Then what any other command NTP trusted key and then NTP authenticate and then NTP master. That's it. We have configured the NTP protocol and the authentication on the router. Now let's move to firewall. So how do we configure it? The configuration part is quite similar. NTP authentication <coughs> key, key ID, then algorithm, and then the password capital C small ISC 0123. Okay. Then NTP trusted key. Then NTP authenticate <coughs> and finally define the server. NTP server IP address 10.1.1.1 source MGMT. That's it. But NTP server 10.1 has no key, therefore it cannot be authenticated. Huh? What does it mean? Okay. Okay, okay, let me tell you, we miss, we miss a keyword. I need to write key to perform the authentication, okay? So key, and then what is the key ID we configured? We have configured the key ID as one, right? The key ID is one. So we need to write this key ID, key one, and that's the complete command. Okay, NTP server, then source, and then you have to define the key. Now wait. Show NTP status. Now it will take again some couple of seconds or minutes. <coughs> so 
So let's wait for two, three minutes. Uh, until then, let me have water. Resume recording. Show NTP status. Clock is synchronized. Done. Show NTP association detail. When you will execute this command, show NTP association detail on the firewall. Okay. Do, uh, do you see that firewall says that 10.1.1.1 has been configured as an NTP server and it has been authenticated. Could you see? So from here, you can verify whether the NTP server has been authenticated by the client or not. Okay. So this is how you configure the NTP protocol on the firewall. Now, <laughs> Any queries, guys? Uh, who are there in the batch? Mr. Amit, Mr. Ben, Mr. Mike, Santosh ji, any queries? It's clear. It's clear to everybody? Okay, fine. It's, it's clear, sorry, I was on mute. Now, I would like to talk about <clears throat> syslog messages on ASA. However, I have discussed the syslog message on the ASA, but still in a quick go, let's just revise it. Okay, because there are a few commands which we have not discussed as of now for the syslog. So I told you guys by default, log messages on ASA are disabled. That means if either you are going to take the uh, remote access or the physical access via the console cable, the firewall will never give you the log message, right? Uh, show interface IP brief. Right now the management interface is in up, upstate interface M0 slash zero. Let me just execute the shutdown command. The interface will go down. But did you find any log message on the firewall? No, because by default, logging is disabled. Run this command, show logging, and see your firewall says the logging is disabled. See, everything is disabled on the firewall. No logs will be given. Fine. So how you can enable the log messages on the firewall? First of all, you need to run logging enable. And then you need to define <coughs> up to what severity level you would like to get the log messages, right? So if you write down seven, that means you will get the log message from severity level zero to seven. Now move to interface and zero slash zero, run no shutdown command. And you can see you are getting the log message. Firewall says that this interface has been brought in the upstate. Fine. So this is what uh, uh, checking the log messages on the firewall only. Okay. Now let's suppose that I would like my firewall to send the log messages to a syslog server. Guys, do you remember that uh, when we have discussed the syslog messages on the router, we have performed a practical of syslog, right? In that syslog, what we have taken, we have taken a Kiwi syslog server where we have asked the router to please send all the log messages to the Kiwi syslog server. Remember? So I'm not going to perform the same practical again, but I'm going to tell you the commands on the firewall, okay, to send the log messages to the syslog server. Is it clear? <coughs> so basically, Let's suppose that's my ASA, fine. And I want my ASA to send all the log messages to our syslog server. Now, what is the first condition? The first condition is that your firewall must be reachable with the 
syslog server right there should be reachability so if the reachability is there then you need to perform syslog configuration on the firewall and firewall will start sending the log messages to the syslog server is it clear so and what are those commands the commands are exactly similar to the router <coughs> so show run logging so with this command you have enabled the log messages on the firewall with this command you have told the firewall that you would like to see the log messages up to 70 level 7 because 70 level 7 is known as debugging right now i would like that my firewall should send the log messages to the syslog server okay so what command you can run logging then host then you need to define through which interface my firewall should send the syslog messages so right now we are having only this interface as the configured interface so i will tell my firewall that please send the syslog messages through the management interface now i have to define the ip address of the syslog server okay so let's suppose my syslog server is having the ip 10.1.1.1 okay then anything else the cr is there that means the command is complete so with this command we have asked the firewall to please send the syslog messages via this interface to this ip okay now we need to tell the firewall that whenever you are going to send the syslog messages to the syslog server please send the log messages up to 70 level whatever 70 level you want to define fine so show run <coughs> logging so basically these two commands are the necessary commands if you want to if you want your firewall to send the log messages to the syslog server okay so you can perform this practical by yourself the uh, you you can just conduct the practical similarly what we have done with the cisco router just take the firewall make this firewall connected with a switch and make this switch connected with the cloud on the eve right and install the kiwi syslog server on your laptop and then just configure the syslog <coughs> configuration on the firewall and check if your firewall is sending the log messages on the kiwi server or not is it clear to everybody i am just not conducting the same practical again because i have already performed the same practical previously right so i believe the i just need to tell you the commands and you shall be able to do this guys do you really need the practical or are you fine with this please let me know yeah if you know some freeware uh, uh if you know a freeware that we can use for the syslog for testing you know uh, that that's uh, if you can suggest a freeware syslog server uh, i have already too. shared a syslog server with all of you oh okay it's on the I, list okay i, I have right. shared the setup of kiwi syslog server oh kiwi okay Just please right. check uh, please check the google drive link which we have shared you initially during your second or third class Yes, I have it. I have it. And I, I, okay. I didn't look for the syslog server. So, <laughs> okay. all right. Thank you. Thank you. So that's about the syslog configuration on the firewall. <coughs> Now the important things are going to come up. How traffic is processed by the firewall. so from here basically your core concepts of the firewall get started okay so in to and now we are going to talk about how firewall process the traffic now let me tell you whatever i am going to tell you it is not going to end up here because once we will configure vpn we will talk the firewall uh, packet processing again when we will configure nat protocol on the firewall we will talk about the packet flow again so we will keep on of going through the pack of packet flow on the firewall again and again 
but in today's class i am going to talk about the basic packet flow on the firewall okay when there is no vpn connection when there is no uh, nat configuration it just the basic traditional firewall configuration is there so how the traffic will be processed by the firewall that's what we need to understand today okay so <coughs> Let's suppose that's my ASA. We are having a router R1 over here. Then router R2. Let's suppose this this router is having the IP 10.1.1.1. This interface of the firewall. Let's suppose it it is interface gig zero slash zero and it is gig zero slash one. Okay. It is configured with the IP address ten dot one dot one dot two. Now, this router is having the IP twenty dot one dot one dot one, and this interface of the firewall twenty dot one dot one dot two. Now, let's assume that this router R one has generated a TCP packet. Okay, so we know that whenever a packet is generated. there will be a tcp header in the tcp header there will be a source port number and the destination port number let's suppose that r1 is trying to take the telnet of r2 okay we have configured r2 with the telnet protocol and from r1 we would like to take the telnet of r2 again telnet is a tcp based protocol so what will be the source port number source port number will be random let's suppose that the source port number is 1025 what will be the destination port number it will be 23 now in the ip header what will be the source ip the source ip will be 10.1.1.1 what will be the destination ip 20.1.1.1 fine now <clears throat> before processing for the telnet try to understand guys before this router will actually take the telnet access of router r2 we know that tcp protocol always uh, goes through the three way handshake process so obviously in the tcp header there will be a syn flag synchronized flag which will be kept as on so when the when the syn flag will be sent to the firewall hold on hold on for a moment one more thing uh, i just forgot to introduce because we know that whenever we configure uh, <coughs> whenever we configure ip address on the interface of the firewall we need to define the logical name right guys so let's suppose that this interface is having the logical name as inside and this interface is having the logical name as outside fine and assume that we have configured this interface with the security level 100 and this interface has been configured with the security level 0 okay now what happens on the firewall by default cisco firewall allows the traffic from high security level to low security level is it clear i am saying by default your cisco firewall allows the packet from high security level to low security level is it clear so when this synchronized pa packet will be sent by the router to the firewall okay now <coughs> your first of all firewall is going to check the ingress interface ingress interface means on which interface i have received the packet the ingress interface is what gig 0 slash 0 right and what is the security level of that packet oh, sorry what is the security level of that interface 100 now firewall will check what is the egress interface how firewall will check the egress interface egress interface means through which i have to forward the packet firewall will check the destination ip and how firewall will come to know about the egress interface by checking the 
routing table right so router will check the routing table router will come to know sorry the firewall will come to know that the network of 20 is connected on gig 0 slash 1 so firewall will automatically get an idea that i have to forward this packet from interface gig 0 slash 1 which is having security level 0 and as i told you then firewall is going to check the security level finally firewall will say that i have received a packet on the security level 100 and this packet wants to reach to security level 0 that means high security level to low security level packet is already allowed on the firewall that's the by default nature so firewall will forward this packet to the router r2 is it clear to everybody any queries till this point guys any queries till this point please be proactive yeah quick uh, question uh, 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 niraj yes, what please? if uh, the what if the security levels are the same for instance okay uh, we will talk um uh, mike uh, is it mike yes is it you yes, yes 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 mr mike we will talk about this but just for the answer if the two interfaces are having the same security level on the firewall by default their traffic is not permitted we have okay. to run additional commands to allow the traffic to pass through all right got it okay so now that is a first case okay let's talk it let's call it the case first when the packet has been generated from inside interface and packet wants to move to the outside interface fine now consider a scenario when this router r2 wants to take the telnet of r1 so r2 will generate a tcp packet having the synchronized flag with the source port number with the destination port number right there will be a source ip 20.1.1.1 Destination IP will be there 10.1.1.1. When this packet will be forwarded by the router R2 to the firewall, again, first of all, firewall is going to check the in ingress interface. I have received this packet on gig 0 slash 1. Fine. Second, firewall will check the egress interface. Through which interface I have to forward the traffic? By checking the destination IP. Firewall will check the routing table and through routing table, firewall will get to know I have to forward this traffic from gig zero slash zero. Now firewall will check the security level, level. Firewall will say I have received the packet on zero security level and this packet has to forward to 100 security level. And by default, the traffic allows, traf by default firewall allows the traffic from high to low only, but low to high, is not allowed on the firewall by default okay so that means this packet will be dropped by the firewall guys are you clear with the first case completely everybody yes Prashant, it's clear okay, okay. <coughs> let's talk about case two Ten dot one dot one dot one, ten dot one dot one dot two, twenty dot one dot one dot two, twenty dot one dot one dot one. Fine, that's a ASA. Now, let's suppose that. <coughs> let's talk about the sync plus act message. Okay, directly. Let's suppose that this router R one has generated. Okay. <coughs> now let's suppose that your router r1 has generated a sync plus act message okay having the source ip 10.1.1.1 destination ip 20.1.1.1 fine now when this packet will be forwarded by the router r1 to the firewall okay i am just okay try to connect the these cases with the previous with the previous case when in the case one the router r1 has sent the synchronized message right fine 
the packet has been passed by the firewall then now i am saying let's suppose that if your router uh, r1 has generated a sync plus acknowledgement message fine now when the firewall is going to receive this message okay firewall will check the ingress interface fine again the ingress interface is gig 0/0 slash that's fine now firewall will check the egress interface gig 0/1 slash that's also fine now firewall will check the security level security level is what zero uh, the packet has to be forward from security level 100 to zero now ideally this packet should be forwarded by the firewall right guys as per the case one the firewall should forward this packet but firewall will drop this packet why firewall will drop this packet because firewall will say that if i have not received any synchronized message okay if i have not received any synchronized message from this end why i am getting synchronized plus acknowledgement message via this way so ideally your firewall will block this traffic it will drop this is it clear to all of you yes okay now no, let's suppose actually, now you, actually, uh, i'm trying to understand the case one is that uh, by default uh, okay yes, tarun tarun uh, tarun let me just make it a, a pretty simple here okay let uh, when r2 in the case one okay in the case one r2 has generated a synchronized message right right uh, i'm talking about this case okay in this case r2 has generated a synchronized message correct correct r2 has generated right it has been dropped by the firewall why because of the security level security level right so that means firewall has not passed this traffic now i i'm just giving you a scenario let's suppose that this router r1 is sending synchronized plus acknowledgement message to the firewall mm -hmm. ideally it should be passed but firewall will drop it because firewall is such an intelligent device firewall will say if no synchronized message has been passed through in this from low to high then why i am receiving this synchronized plus acknowledgement message firewall will drop this is it in, clear tarun in the first case also firewall will drop in the second case also firewall will drop yes right okay okay so krishan if it is only the same syn uh, synchronization packet then it will not drop the packet right yes Suppose obviously yes yes hold on let me just complete that both the case one and case two then still if you guys will be having any queries then i i, I will be answering you okay so right now i just have discussed about this this case one okay and this case two these are related with each other is it clear to all of you the case one this one okay when the packet sync packet has been generated by r2 okay it has been dropped by the firewall now let's suppose that if firewall is receiving synchronized plus acknowledgement message on the gig 0/0 firewall will drop it even though this packet should be passed but firewall will drop it why because firewall will say that if i have not allowed any synchronized pa pa packet in this flow then how can i get the synchronized plus acknowledgement message directly is it clear everybody now with the case one let me talk about this one this case uh this one okay now in this case your firewall has generated a synchronized message it has been passed by the firewall because firewall knows i have received a synchronized message and the packet has to be forwarded from low high security level to low security level it has been allowed right now let's suppose that when this r2 will generate synchronized plus acknowledgement message firewall will receive this packet and now your fire now you can see the packet has to be forwarded from low security level to high security level right guys but this packet will be allowed by the firewall because firewall will say that already a packet has been passed synchronized packet has been passed from high security level to low security level right so 
obviously firewall knows this thing that uh, i will receive a acknowledgement plus synchronized message moving towards the inside interface so this packet will be accepted by the firewall despite the traffic is moving from low security to high security is it clear to all of you now i don't get it not uh mr amit any queries mr ben imran ji mike i'm good no problem okay. clear okay fine don't worry i'll give you i'll will uh, will uh, will talk about this more in detail so that's just a basic packet flow now pro now the question is that how firewall is allowing the packet from low security level to high security level okay that means firewall is somewhere maintaining a table in that table firewall will keep an eye that if a synchronized packet has been passed through a uh, high to low then obviously i will be receiving a synchronized plus acknowledgement message so obviously there will be some table where firewall will be maintaining this information right guys that table on the firewall is known as connection table that table on the firewall is known as connection table now let me describe you the same packet flow with the connection table now so we are having r1 r2 2111 it is having security level 100 it is having security level 0 this interface is having the logical name inside this interface is having the logical name outside fine now now let me make you understand the packet flow now <coughs> let's suppose that this router r1 has generated a tcp synchronized message the source ip will be 10111 destination ip will be 211 okay now when this packet will be received by the firewall first of all firewall will check the ingress interface ingress interface is what inside because we know firewall always work using the logical name of the interfaces not with the physical name second now firewall will check the egress interface of the packet egress interface will be uh, calculated by the firewall by checking the routing table only the egress interface is what outside now your firewall will check the security level the packet has to be passed from high to low security level the traffic will be allowed is it clear to all of you now now before before actually forwarding this packet to the router r2 your firewall will immediately create a connection table and in the connection table firewall will create an entry okay your firewall will immediately will create an entry in the connection table and the entry will be something like this that using a, a from source ip 10.1.1.1 having port number obviously the source port number will be random let's suppose 1030 on the inside interface fine i have received a packet and i have forwarded a packet to the destination ip 20.1.1.1 having the port number 23 on the outside interface is it clear this this is the connection table of the firewall so before forwarding the packet through its outside interface firewall will make an entry in the connection table okay now when this <coughs> just wait now when this r2 will send the sync 
the synchronized passage uh, packet has been passed now when this r2 will generate synchronized plus acknowledgement message having the source ip as 20.1.1.1 destination ip as 10.1.1.1 what will be the source port number it will be 23 over here what will be the destination port number it will be 1030 right guys i hope you are clear with the packet formation now when this packet will be received by the firewall okay now firewall here will first of all will check the connection table firewall will check first of all the connection table do i have any entry matching this these packet so so firewall will say yes there is a entry which is matching an entry in the connection table so firewall will allow this packet and in this scenario firewall is not going to check the security level is it clear so if a entry matches in the connection table then in that scenario your firewall is not going to check the security level concept okay now in this scenario in this case there was no entry in the connection table that is why firewall ha has to uh, check the security level it has to put this entry in the connection table and th that's and then the packet has been forwarded but returning packet has been matched in the connection table so now your firewall will not check the security level thing it says the firewall will say since this packet has been requested okay from a trusted zone because there is an entry in the connection table so firewall will allow this packet without checking the security level is it clear to all of you varun are you sir one question here yes amit so, hello yes amit uh, so how firewall will come to know that whether it's a in case in case amit 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 ji amit ji your voice is not clear to me i'm really sorry Am I am I audible now? Yes, you are. Yeah. So how far will far will will come to know whether it's ingress interface or outgoing interface with with the help of security level or we need to define it explicitly with uh, the way we were doing uh, in route zone based far wall. Okay. So uh, basically, you want to know how this uh, how far wall is going to process the packet. Uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't get your question. Um, it's really sorry. How, so how basically, far, how far mm -hmm. one came to know that it's whether it's in ingress interface or out uh, outside interface. How far one so will check about to... ingress interface and egress interface? Yes. How how it will come to know it's inside zone and outside zone? We need to define it explicitly, or how it is. Okay. Let me tell you. Uh, Amit, whenever we configure any interface on the firewall, we have to give the logical name, right? So these are just the logical name. Fine. Yes. Yes. So when firewall will receive a packet on this interface, obviously the firewall knows that that this is the inside interface on which I have received the packet, right? Mm -hmm. And the egress interface will be checked by the firewall using the routing table. Clear me. There's nothing extra. Huh? Yes, yes. Okay, so the process is similar to the router. How does router forwards the packet? It receives the packet. It checks the destination IP. Mm -hmm. If the destination right. IP is available in the routing table, it will come to know the exit interface and forwards the packet. Right? Yes. Similar is the case here. So. again just to summarize so whenever your firewall is going to receive the packet first of all your firewall will check the connection table if there is any entry in the connection table then firewall will pass the traffic because in the connection table the firewall will have the entry through which interface i have to forward the traffic also it does not need to check the routing table if the entry is present in the connection table is it clear to all of you that's why when this synchronized plus acknowledgement packet has been received by the firewall firewall just check the connection table oh there is an entry firewall just uh, pass this traffic and did i told you firewall check the routing table egress interface no because that entry will be present in the connection table that 
this packet has to be forward via this interface. So firewall does not have to check the routing table. And also the firewall will not check the security level. Clear to everybody? Yes, it's clear, yeah. <laughs> All of you, Tarun, are you clear with this? I have a few questions. I am writing it down. I will ask in the hand. Okay. Okay. Not an issue. Now, let's talk about the third packet. That is acknowledgement packet. Okay. That this packet has been passed. Now, when the acknowledgement packet will be generated by the firewall, the source IP will be 10111. Destination IP will be 2111. When firewall will receive the packet, try to understand. I told you the very first thing firewall is going to do is check the connection table. Now, when this packet will be received by the firewall, there is already an entry. Firewall knows that the synchronized packet has been passed. Synchronized acknowledgement packet has been passed. So now, now your firewall is neither going to check the routing table, neither it is going to check the security level. Firewall will just pass the traffic according to the connection table only as simple as that. Is it clear to all of you now? Yes, sir. yes. Sir. The complete packet processing of the firewall. <coughs> so if you guys are having any query till this point, please let me know else I'm going to jump to the practical section. We'll see all these things practically. So no queries. So let me just move to the lab. So I will configure the logical name of this interface as inside. The logical name of this interface will be outside. We'll configure the security level zero over here and security level hundred over here. Fine. And we'll see the connection table. We'll see <coughs> the packet inspection. So let's start with the R1. No. <laughs> Enable configuration terminal interface is 0 slash 0. No shutdown. IP address will be 10.1.1.1. 255.255.255.255. .1 .1 .1. Host name R1. You have configured the IP address on the router R1. Move to firewall. Enable and enter. Move to global configuration mode. And in the global configuration mode, first of all, change the host name to ASA. Then I will configure interface gig 0 slash 1. No shutdown. Name if inside. Now, did you notice one thing? Even though I have not configured security level for this interface, it has set to 100. Why? Let me tell you that on the Cisco firewall, if you configure the logical name as inside, by default, the security level will be set to 100. But if you give any other logical name X other than inside, the security level be, security level will be zero by default. Okay. Then I, IP address 10.1.1.10.255.255.255.0. Then, then interface gig 0 slash 0, no shutdown, name if outside, and then IP address 20.1.1.10.255.255.255.0. Check the configuration, show name if. These two interfaces have been given these logical name and they are having this security level. Fine. Show interface IP brief. Done. Everything is fine on the firewall. Now move to router R3. No. R2. 
enable configuration terminal interface is 0 slash 0 no shutdown ip address will be 20.1.1.1.255.255.255.0 host name will be r2 that's it we have configured the ip addresses on all the appliances now let me configure telnet protocol on router r2 so how do we configure telnet line vty 0 to 4 transport input all no login that's it telnet protocol has been configured on the router r2 now move to router r1 <coughs> and let's take the telnet access of router r2 okay so do telnet 20.1.1.1 it says destination unreachable why it says destination unreachable let me just check on the firewall show route so both the routes are there move to okay 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 got it on the router r1 we have not defined the route for the network of 20 right do show ip route so ip route to reach network of 20 255.0.0.0 exit interface is 0 slash 0 similarly move to router r2 on the router r2 it does not have the path to reach network of 10 ip route to reach network of 10 exit interface is 0 slash 0 that's it now try to take the telnet from router r1 20.1.1.1 it is not able to take the telnet why let me just check once logging console 7 do telnet 20.1.1.1 sorry what happened Uh, will I be able to ping ping or not ping? ping you will, will be work. able to ping, but by default, the ping, the ICMP protocol is not allowed on the firewall. Mm -hmm. By default, the ICMP is not allowed. You have to run this command fix up protocol ICMP because by default, the Cisco firewall do not create any entry for the ICMP protocol in the connection table. Okay. So if there is no entry in the connection table, obviously the ping will never be successful. So to, if you want your firewall should create an entry for the ICMP protocol also in the connection table, you need to run this command. Okay. Now let me just check the connectivity from router R1 to R2. So in case of man management port, it is allowed, allowable, right? What? In case of management protocol, ICMP is allowed. Yes, on the management interface, you can ping the firewall to check the connectivity. But when you are talking about the passing the traffic from mm -hmm. one port to another port to the firewall, by default, ICMP is not allowed because okay. for the ICMP, firewall is not going to maintain the connection table. Clear? So also, we are having... Also, yeah. it will know show so show CDP neighbor neighbor and also not come on the Cisco firewall. The CDP is not supported. Okay. Okay, there is some reachability issue. Let me just check. So let me do one thing: configuration terminal. I know do show run pipe section IP root. No, let me just remove this route. 
and instead of that let me give the ip route to reach default gateway 10.1.1.10 and similarly on router r2 do show run pipe section ip route no let me give the route again with the next hop address as 20.1.1.10 ping 20.1.1.10 Okay, so R2 is able to reach firewall interface. Do ping 10.1.1.10. So reachability is there. Now, let me just try to take the telnet. Do telnet 20.1.1.1. Yes. So right now, right now, if I try to ping, okay, right now I have not performed any other configuration on the firewall except the interface configuration you can see no other configuration has been performed on the firewall now i told you by default if i if okay if i am going to ping from router r1 to router r2 20.1.1.1 the ping will not be successful why because i told you by default the cisco firewall is never going to maintain the entry in the connection table for the icmp protocol so if the firewall is not going to maintain the entry in the connection table, obviously the reply packet will be dropped. So you need to run this command fix up protocol ICMP so that firewall can allow the ICMP traffic to get inspected. And now when you will try to ping from R1 to R2, the ping will be successful. Is it clear to everybody the meaning of this command fix up protocol ICMP? Any queries in this one, please be uh, quick. Mr. Mike. Uh, yes, quick, quick, quick question there. I thought, yes. you know, Cisco, had, Cisco was no longer using the fix up. There's rather a, a policy, you know, where yes. you can, yeah, you cannot use that instead of the fix up. Yes, absolutely. Basically, this fix up protocol, ICMP, these, these configuration are the part of modular policy framework. Yes. Right. So, however, even in, in your next generation firewalls, which you are getting, you can run this command fix up protocol ICMP. Okay, excellent. Okay. Now we have the reachability from router R1 to R2. Now let me just take the telnet, telnet 20.1.1.1 and we'll see R2, R1 has taken the telnet of R2. Now check the connection table on the firewall because I told you everything is dependent upon the connection table. To check the connection table on the firewall, the command is show connection. Okay. Or you can just run show con. Execute this command and see what does your firewall says. Let me just copy this. So that's the entry in the connection table. This is what, this is protocol, okay? This is what, this is your low security level interface. This is what your destination IP and the destination port number. This is what, your high security level in interface. This is what your source IP address and the source port number. Fine. It says idle from last 15 seconds. Why it is idle? Because we are not doing anything. If I execute the command on the router R1, so this idle timeout will be refresh. Check. Okay. Now talking about these flags, we will talk about the flags. They're, these flags are really useful and these flags are often asked in the interview section. Okay. So we will talk about the flags, but not today in the upcoming class. Okay. So you can see that the, there is an entry in the connection table. Now, if I, let's move back to the topology. 
let me try to ping from r2 to r1 ping 10.1.1.1 sorry do ping 10.1.1.1 the ping will not be allowed why because the traffic is moving from low security level to high security level obviously the firewall will drop it okay is it clear to all of you uh, logging console 7 logging enable let me move back to router r2 let me execute this command ping move to your firewall see your firewall says denied denied a packet received from the source ip 20.1.1.1 on my outside interface which is having the destination 10.1.1.1 inside interface i have denied this packet is it clear to all of you yes okay now let's suppose that right now your firewall is having uh entries in the connection table right now you would like to uh you want that your firewall should break all the connections you want that your firewall should not send any traffic of any ip address okay so what you need to do you just need to clear out the connection table because if there will be no entry in the connection table the firewall will not allow any packet right so so basically if you want that your firewall should break all the connections okay whatever running so you can just run this command on the firewall clear con and in this scenario you can see you got a log message firewall says that i have tear down the connection now what does it mean basically when you will execute this command clear con on the firewall the firewall will send a a reset flag to the connections and what does reset flag does in the tcp reset flag means the the connection has to be break is it clear to all of you any queries any queries guys <coughs> mm, all are good with this yes okay now let me yes now let me tell you that whatever packet flow we have discussed as of now the entry in the connection table checking the routing table checking the security level let me tell you it is this packet flow is applicable for all type of traffic either it is ip traffic tcp traffic udp traffic whatever traffic it is it is applicable for every for all type of traffic let me prove you so what i am going to do now guys i am going to configure this router r2 as a dns server so because we know that dns is a udp based protocol okay so let's configure r2 as a dns server so how do we configure router as a dns server ip dns server and then i want this router to host a website ip host r2.com and the ip address 20.1.1.1 fine now this router will work as a dns server move to router r1 okay just wait <laughs> now i will try to take the telnet from router r1 using the domain name so before taking the access from the domain name you need to tell this router r1 that what is your dns server so ip name server is the command i i have told my router r1 that this is your dns server and now take telnet using the domain name r2.com you can see the dns query has been resolved we have got the telnet access and if i show you the connection table on the firewall show <coughs> connection uh, i think the firewall has removed that entry just wait 
because in the dns a query message has been sent a reply has been received and that is it so let us do one more thing move to r1 let us just check on the firewall hold on this is exit a uh, telnet or let me just run this command ping r2.com the ping is successful show can and on the firewall show connection so basically the only uh, uh, reason is that the dns query get uh, the router sends the dns query the other router reply back and that's what then that is what the dns connection is over here you can see here you can see in the log messages on the firewall uh see the firewall says that i have built an outbound udp connection you can see the firewall says i have created an outbound udp connection and it has if 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 the firewall is saying that i have connect i have created an outbound udp connection that means the firewall has created an entry in the connection table is it clear and then it says i have tear down the entry why just because just because the the udp packet flow is something like this a dns query will be sent a dns reply will be received and that's what it is your router is further not going to send any udp message right any dns message that is why we are not able to see uh, that packet in the connection table is it clear to all of you guys is it clear to all of you yes for sure okay so just for the clarity that yes that any type of traffic you can see that even for the icmp traffic the firewall says that i have built up an outbound tcp icmp connection icmp connection right so that means any connection is created by the firewall it will be put in the connection table as simple as that but you will not be able to see the entries in the connection table why just because in the icmp a icmp request message will be sent and icmp reply will be received by the router that is it the firewall will break the connection okay now talking about the same interface traffic so as i told you by default the traffic on the uh, by default if the firewalls are if the firewalls are having uh two interfaces with the same security level let's suppose this interface is having security level 100 and this interface is also having security level 100 so by default this traffic will not be allowed by the firewall okay let me show you move to router move to the firewall interface gig 0 slash 0 let me change the security level of this interface to 100 no logging enable let me disable the logging now no logging console seven so show name if you can see right now both the interfaces are having the same security level now let me try to take the telnet okay am i able to take the telnet no has the dns query resolved no by because by default firewall will never allow the traffic uh, to pass from one interface to another interface if the security levels are same okay so what you can do in that condition if you want your uh, route your devices should communicate with each other on the interfaces of the firewall having the same security level then you need to run this command same security traffic permit enter 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 interface so you need to run this command and then firewall will allow the traffic move to router r1 take the telnet again and see the telnet is successful is it clear to all of you yes it is thank you okay so just a final thing
remember if it is my firewall okay there are three interfaces if this interface of the firewall has been provided a logical name let's suppose that inside so you cannot configure same name on other another interface you i cannot configure inside name on the other interface of the firewall so basically the logical name that you configure on the firewall are all unique you cannot have same logical name on two different uh, interfaces of the firewall however security level can be same and that's all for today so today we have just discussed the basic packet flow of the firewall okay and uh, for the same security level by default firewall do not allow the traffic you need to run an additional command also by default the icmp protocol is not allowed on the firewall the firewall will not let icmp traffic to pass through until and unless you need to run this command fix the protocol icmp also last thing that i would like to show you is that what is the time period for an for an entry in the connection table you can run this command show run uh show run time out so with this command you will be able to see uh, the time out for all the for all the uh, protocols or whatever you say so you can see the uh, uh, the firewall says in the connection table i will keep tcp entry for 1 hour okay the tcp protocol any entry for the tcp protocol will be kept for 1 hour but udp entry will be there only for the 2 minutes that means if your connection is idle for more than 2 minutes the firewall will break the connection similarly let's suppose that your firewall is having a tcp connection in the connection table but that connection is idle so firewall will keep it until 1 hour but moment it crosses the 1 hour the firewall will kill the session is it clear to all of you everyone is clear with this okay so that's all for today